Oh Shalom, in this video just going to be looking at Matthew 8 um, For those of you that know that I was in the Holy Land I uh, visited the Mount of Beatitudes and this is of course where Yeshua was said to have um, spoken of in Matthew 5 um, Blessed be the meek and so on, they shall inherit the earth Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven so I actually went up there, I just read out these scriptures and uh, a lot of people wonder why there's not so many um, travelers, there's not so many pilgrims that go up there with tents and stay there. Well the answer is what happens in Matthew chapter 8 when he comes down from the mountain and the great multitudes follow him and you can read it through. Um, right up until, um, and, I, and I obviously believe that it's, it's uh, the same for any region around the Sea of Galilee. And it's the same type of terrain, so obviously Yeshua is still in the area when he meets, um, well it says, and when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gerizans, okay, so uh, again, it's around the Sea of Galilee, I believe. There are men too possessed with devils. There meant him too possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fear, so that no man might pass him by that way. Now my understanding was that it was just one man that was filled with devils. I don't know if this is a Mandela effect, another one I've just discovered. But... Uh, Two possessed with devils. I thought it was just one man. I think when when you we watch the movies about Jesus, it's just one man. So, in this Oxford edition of the King James Bible, this is Matthew eight verse twenty eight. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And Strange, it's too possessed with devils, it's crazy. There met him to possess with devils. It was never two, right? I, I didn't know this, I didn't plan. I didn't even read this before. I was just going to go through it and I was going to explain what happened, uh, the terrain of the place, because I was there. But, yeah, another Mandela effect, I reckon. Quantum effect. And there was a good way off from them, and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If they cast us out, suffer us to go away unto the herd of swine. He said unto them, Go. And when they, they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and perished in the waters. Okay. Um, so... My experience when I was uh, up there, um, what happened was when I was coming down the hill, um, I heard a lot of rustling in the bulrushes. There's all kind of bushes and plants up there that the monastery has a lot of uh, things planted and different things. But I heard a rushing and it was a very violent rushing and I, and I was sort of, I stopped where I was. And uh, to the right where I was, I was uh, facing, like up the hill, this uh, black hog emerged. This thing was probably, I would say, about eight foot long by almost maybe five foot tall. The thing was, I would say, probably was a lot longer than that. But it was a fat um, hog, basically, and uh, it was it was black in color. So it was a wild hog. So the point is that in that region, all around the Sea of Galilee. There's actually uh, pigs running around there, all different types of them, um, different um, species of, of hogs, of pigs, uh, all around that region. Nobody keeps them, nobody's farming them. You know, I've heard uh, pastors and all of that um, giving um, what, what their rendition of uh, this means and what the terrain was and all of that, that there was Jews there farming pigs. No, there's just a lot of wild pigs around that area. You know, and, and I was speaking to an archaeologist from America, 
from from around that way, where he was just sleeping rough, and he said that he, he was sleeping under a tree one night, and uh, he's a Christian, and uh, something just made him uh, climb a wall, which was probably about um, seven or eight feet tall, this sort of broken wall, and he ended up sleeping up on top of the wall, and he, he, he wasn't sure why, he thought, you know, in case there is any wild animals, and sure enough, you know, just... Uh, in the early hours of the morning, there, there was what's described here, you know, a herd of swine just appeared. And so he was thankful that uh, he he listened to God and um, because they could have trampled him underfoot, you know. It's, Yeshua talks about that as well. And I'm sure it happened quite a lot for travelers and people who who slept rough out there, and there still is people that, that are sleeping rough in the, the towns and villages out there, except from the, the, the surrounding land, you know, um, it's quite rough terrain, but there is a bit of grass as well, but it is very dry, uh, not compared to Scotland, which has been uh, very cold the past week, it's been below zero, on and off it's been below zero, getting really cold, but today, it's up about 15 degrees and it's 88% humidity in, in Scotland, in the west of Scotland where I'm from today. So, very bizarre indeed. A lot of people were expecting snow and now we're back to almost, um, I wouldn't quite call it summer, but it's very, very mild out there today. Um, and so I, I just thought I'd enlighten you with that. Um, you know, the, the, there's still no Jews that keep pigs, there's a lot of farms around the Sea of Galilee and even though the past 10 years the water has been going down quite dramatically around the sea there, um, there's still more than enough and there's still fish in there um, even though there's a lot less fishing these days um, unfortunately but, you know, there's a lot more sea uh, fish in the sea and the Red Sea but um, yeah, um, you know, Israel talking about water shortages and there is farms around there that are using the water from the Sea of Galilee and they're able to produce, um, you know, pure water from the salt water as well. So uh, it is kind of used as a, as a reservoir for many farms there. But uh, yes, um, I think... Uh, you know, Israel's been in the land now for almost uh, a generation. You know, as Yeshua talks about, this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. And uh, we know that 1947, you know, was when that generation, 1947-48, was when they officially got independence. And, uh, you know, that that is what I think Yeshua, the generation he was describing. And so we're approaching that fulfillment of that generation within the next two years. Hallelujah. And so, uh, yes, today, um, of course, when you're driving out demons, I think these, these demons do want a place to go. And I've heard the little Christians just sending them to hell. And that's great. You know, um, whether they go there or not, whether it's their time to go there or not, I'm not sure. But I think it's just the presence of the Lord. If you carry the presence of the Lord, with you and you command things in, in, in Jesus Christ's name or indeed Yeshua's name um, they must obey you they must obey you and um, that's just as simple as that some of them might take longer than others to come out and as, as Jesus said in the King James Bible some don't come out except through prayer and fasting so sometimes you have to fast a little bit and pray a little bit in order for these things to be driven out of people and um, these are those who are obviously willing for these entities to be driven out but they must be instructed as I've said um, constantly they must be instructed to get filled with the Holy Spirit otherwise you know Yeshua said that seven demons will come back for the one demon which has been driven out of that person and um, it's not just uh, good for your house to be swept clean and everything to be put in order, it's got to be filled with the presence of the Lord. And so how do we get that? Through prayer. Sometimes we must fast as well. Um, so I think if you've, you've been 
uh, delivered. You know, there's a lot of people having deliverance ministries these days. If you're one of these people, I think uh, just spending a bit of time in prayer and fasting with the Lord and asking Him to fill you with the Spirit, more of Him, less of you. Remember, this is what John said, um, John the Baptist. He wanted more of Jesus. Um, so this is what we should, we should pray for in our lives. Hallelujah. So I hope this has been helpful. And I'll be back with another video about Starstruck.